So hi everyone, welcome to the test ride of this 2005 Honda CBR 600RR. This particular bike is the UP205 model with the conventional forks. 05 on has the upside down forks or inverted forks, if you will. But uh, this is a review for anyone looking to buy one of these bikes because not everyone can afford a brand new bike. So trying to review some older models, some more affordable models. I'm going to show you what it feels like to ride, comfort, practicality, handling, everything I can. So let's get it out in the road, see what we think. Just point out to you, this bike has a few mods done. Obviously, paint has been redone, and it has an Akrapovic exhaust or Akrapovic, however you want to pronounce it. But uh, yeah, let's get it out on the road and see how we get on. Okay guys, so one of the first things you will notice with this bike, how far you're lean forward if you're used to sports, or so you're used to touring bikes, or adventure bikes, or cruisers, you just lean really far forward. Uh, let's get going. It is in a really aggressive stance. This particular bike has a Translogic shifter. It has got throttle cable so it only works on the way up, you must use the clutch on the way down. But it's the owner here, the first thing he comes to me, he thinks it's not got a lot of power down low, but if you're beginning out in bikes or you just are used to if you're beginning out in bikes or even even you're used to smaller engine bikes, it has got a decent amount of grunt down low. I'm in sixth gear now and just open her up and it, it goes on pretty good. I wouldn't complain of that at all. I just obviously once it has a power band it really takes off but uh, the main thing about these bikes especially guys if this is your first going to be your first bike i would really recommend getting a test riding one because a lot of guys are system that own these type of bikes if they had a got a run on them before they bought them they may not have bought them simply for the reason the reason is uh, after about 30 or 40 miles their hands tend to get quite sore because you're leaning really well forward a lot of weights in your hands and wrists unless you're pretty fit and you can hold on with your legs but I'm not finding it too bad so far. The owner of this bike has a cruiser so maybe when they get off the cruiser and get onto this bike you notice it a lot different but although we had this bike first. But uh, the brakes really good in this bike compared to my GSXF the back brake would be better on my bike but the front brake would be better in this bike. Don't know why, just maybe the way they're set up for a sports tour being that bit more heavy. That's me pretty hard on the back brake and there's not a lot there compared to my bike. On the, I noticed in the GSXF the front brake, the back brake is almost better than the front. But back to the Honda. Uh, great mirrors in this bike. You can see pretty well behind you. It's really agile, like it effortless going around corners. It almost wants to do it for you. Just think about it and it goes around a corner. Whereas my bike, you have to put a good bit of input in, just simply because it's bigger and heavier. But yeah, these bikes, if you're interested in stats or MPGs, these bikes are around about 115 horsepower. Get around about 35 mpg. Uh, they run about 150 miles to a tank, depending on how you're driving. Of course, that the bike like this, it's generally irrelevant because you don't buy them for economy. Although I wouldn't recommend them for commuting to and from work anyway. So I wouldn't worry about the mpg that way. I'm going to take it in through the town here, see what it's like in the slow traffic. I mean, I remember the first time I got on this bike, the real foot pegs seemed really high. It's not too bad once you get onto it, but definitely again for your first bike or if you're used to dirt bikes or cruisers or anything, you're going to find it quite strange. I almost had a look to see where the foot pegs were, but I'm getting onto it now. I have a, a bad right wrist anyway, but I'm feeling a little bit on my right wrist already, and we've only done four miles. These bikes, they want you to be tucked up and behind the screen like that, that's where they're happiest at. It's really stable this bike. Nice, it's, I say, nice and light. 
it's actually based on the Moto GP bike at the time. The rear shock absorber and rear swing arm is of the same design, which gives it a real makes it really agile. It's very very flickable. Actually, guys, we might take it up this mountain road here. It's not going to be fast, but it's really twisty. Barely touching it. Reasonably good with the bumps there. Surprised at that for a sports bike. Barely felt those bumps, even with the hard seat. And that's another thing. The seat on these is almost like a plank of wood. Don't expect to be doing any 200, 300 mile road trips without many stops anyway. Some more bumps. Yeah, this thing is pretty decent on the bumps. It's almost better than my bike. See what it's like at pulling up hills now. Keep it fairly low on the rev range. sitting there. 2000 RPM. Yeah. No problems. Yeah, it just wants to lie in the corner. No effort they required there at all, just literally holds the line. Can't feel the little lack of power at these higher altitudes. But still not bad. Got a little shot of the bike here. So guys, yeah, definitely not a disappointment so far, I mean, it's a really nice bike to ride, but uh, we will find out later on in the video as the owner says, you got to give it 30 or 40 miles at least to feel the pain in the wrists, but again it depends just how good your wrists are, how fit you are, so let's get some real miles up and see how we get on. So we're going to hit some twisty stuff here, one thing we'll notice with these bikes, when you're turning full cut, your hand really is jammed against the tank here, because you're obviously, for sports, for a cornering like that, you know, really leaned out, elbow out, so. Let's hit the twisty stuff. So far I've done around, I've done 20, almost 22 miles in this bike and no extra pains yet. disappointed by that, though I don't think I'm just ready for a sports bike yet. Throttle gets a bit twitchier once you get into the power band, but still it's manageable. You get used to it pretty quick. Oh yeah. Logic shifters, great job. Makes it more fun and enjoyable. This bike I was saying earlier on there, this bike was based on the MotoGP bike, I think it's the RC211V. It has the fine, it's gonna call a fine die-cast hollow frame, which that's what makes it so light. Just Honda really wanted to make it as light as they could for obviously for handling and it worked. lighter than, than the touring bike. The 
have been a lot lighter, same size of engine, but it's that's a lot faster. The weight really makes the most difference. Let's open her up a little. at all. This thing didn't go. <laughs> now my bike really looks bad. <laughs> Another beautiful day for hitting the black stuff. Uh, I mean tarmac, not Guinness. In case anybody's wondering, never ever drink and ride. And after 26 miles there, I can safely say no extra pains yet. It's, it's quite tall, you're um, around about 5 foot 10 and I'm um, just up on the balls of my feet there. Now I will get some measurements of this bike at the end of the video, show you how high the bars are, how high the pegs are, how high the seat is. You know, show you just all so you can figure out roughly what it's going to feel like, roughly for your size. But as for weight, you know, it's, it's a nice light bike, nice like sports bike just. Same as the rest of them, like R6s. Yes, sir, sir, 600s no. Imagine this bike would be a real good, great fun on a track, like probably all sports bikes, but I say it's my first ride on a sports bike, so this would really give you an idea if you're a beginner how you'll get on with the bike. There's no, no problems getting used to it. all the great brakes aren't too aggressive, you're not going to do a stoppy or lock the front wheels. And I just, that's so easy to turn. A little bit tight in like of car parks and really tight turns if you have to do a U-turn to the end of a road, but you'll get used to that. One thing you notice with this bike, uh, the if you just touch the bar ends like that, you can feel a lot of vibrations through them. Although it has been told this by the owner of the bike, but uh, it's recommended to get heavier bar ends or to fill the bars with like a lead shot or something, just to something to absorb that vibration. So that's probably the most thing that'll that'll wear you out the fastest, the vibration. My experience at doing a bit of mechanicing over the years, it is not a nice thing to get like a tennis elbow or the same in your shoulder just for it's not nice at all, it can take months to go away. Because I'm I'm not finding not finding this bike too bad at all for the ergonomics of it. Maybe it's just my particular height, but I can't complain about it. I don't think there's anything I'd really change about the bike. I notice you, you really do need the, the tank. You use the tank a lot in these bikes. I've been shuffling back and forward to support myself a little. To get the most support, obviously you want to be as far forward as you can. It takes a little bit of weight off your arms, but I don't find it too bad. It's just to you adjust your elbows to sit. I find it more of a, a straight arm with the elbows are pointing backwards. Seems to be the most comfortable for me. These bikes have the 310mm front discs with Nissan calipers and I think it's 210 or 220mm rears. Operate nice and smooth. You can work with two fingers comfortably. Front brakes, one finger, fine for it. It really helps you hold on. You'll need to do it if you're going fast enough, Spike. Believe me, you'll want to be holding on. Just once you hit about 60 miles an hour there, the wind noise really starts to get up. Obviously, this uh, windscreen is not meant to be a touring windscreen. You want to be doing in like that the whole time with the best design, but just in case you want to know, I want to get at least 50 to 60 miles on this bike just to see what the see if it makes me tired. I've done the same, basically the same run on my own bike yesterday, around about 70 miles. 
more through the back roads, but it's too slow for this bike. There's no shortage of power, unless you really are a top-notch rider. As you say, many, many guys will say why you shouldn't buy any bigger than a 600cc, because it's just there's so much power. Riding a bike like this really make you understand that. I was meant to stay earlier on there. If you ever watch any of Hero Double R's videos, he's into his Hondas and he says it's pretty comfortable. Now, I did mention earlier on there this seat was pretty much like a plank of wood, but it's just just the right level, I think. Of no tiredness, no deadness, and uh, butt cheeks at all. Uh, I couldn't complain about that. Sometimes you do feel like you want to just get up and get those arms a little bit of stretch for you at the wrists, but not bad at all, not bad at all. Alright, so now we'll move on to the open road, see what it's like in a long run on a main road, sitting at 60 miles per hour, roughly. So that's where a bike can get most tiring. My sports touring bike feels most comfortable on like the road like this, just in a long run, sitting cruising at 60 or 70 miles per hour. So we'll see what we were like in this bike. Starting to get a little cramp on the right wrist there, just around about 37 and a half miles. But the thing about the back roads is you're moving about, you're not just sitting there, you know, if you're sitting in an airplane for a long time, your knees start to lock up. So guys, that's after almost 47 miles in the bike, you do feel a bit of tingling and cramps, just a, the numbness in my hands from the vibration from the bars, but that could be addressed. Uh, apart from that, just at the base of your neck, as you can imagine, between the shoulder blades, if it's lying over so much. But apart from that, you're no complaints at all. I could ride this bike a lot more yet. So guys, I hope that gives you a good idea what these bikes are like to live with on a daily basis. We've only done about 50 miles, obviously, but still it gives you an idea of what it's like for living with just general feel, how good it breaks and how well it handles. It's definitely, it's very, very flickable. It's barely touching it. You can weave it about, no problem. But I'll say that I'll get a little shot now after this of the heights of everything, just to let you know what it's like so you can sort of measure yourself up basically just in case you have no way of getting to a dealership to see what it's like but hopefully I've covered all the bases if you have any questions or comments please please feel free to leave them below and I will get back to you as soon as I can um, if you're uh, also this is your first time on the channel and you haven't subscribed if you want to please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button as it really helps us out and it's going to help us bring you lots more videos on I have some restorations coming up in the future, the track bikes to be fixed up. And we have next week, or next time, we've got a test ride on. We've got a 2017 Kawasaki Vulcan 650 coming. But uh, yeah, I'd like to thank the owner of this bike for letting me ride it as it really helps me out because we don't have any big sponsors or anything. It means a lot to me. And hopefully it'll help the channel grow. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Check out the sizes after this. And tune in next time, and I will see you then. Thanks.